Here we have the second mechanism that the Federal Reserve uses to affect the money supply. So in the first one, we learned that banks are given a reserve requirement and they will keep money out of the system if that reserve requirement is high or they will allow money to go into the system if that reserve requirement is low. And what we've learned is that currently the reserve requirement is down as low as it can go. It's at 1% or less. And so banks are operating at full amount of loans trying to be sent into the economy so that they can collect interest back on those kind of investments. All right, so that leads us to believe then that pretty much all banks are teetering on the edge of insolvency. Now, what was put into the Federal Reserve Act in 1913 was the idea that the Fed is the lender of last resort. The bankers argued strongly for this because they said, well, if there's a bankruptcy at the bank, then that hurts all these people down the line and you can't possibly let that happen. But what they were really thinking was, is, hey, I can then be irresponsible and loan out money to everyone. And if I get into trouble, the Federal Reserve will just bail me out. And so it turns out that their, um, their beliefs were actually true. We had bailouts in 1987, we had the savings and loan bailouts in 93, we had the contagion bailouts, we were actually bailing out other countries around the world in 98, we had the great financial crisis in 2008 and 9 where all the banks said, but we're too big to fail, and apparently they were right. So, um, this is how they were given the ability not to fail, and so they can be as irresponsible as they want because in the end the Fed has their back. Okay, So uh, this is the second one to be a lender of last resort. So let's take a look at how the mechanism works. The Federal Reserve um, is the lender of last resort but most of us only understand this part over here. This is where we live so this is you and you go to buy a house and you don't have enough money so you get a mortgage and you have to pay an interest rate. In this case, I'm going to use 5%. But what you need to understand is how did we get to that 5%? So this bank right here, your local branch bank, they will say, well, I'm going to give you the prime lending rate plus 1, and so they will charge you 5%. That 1% is the cut they take. Now remember, the banks don't have any money in the vault, and so where do they get the money to give you a loan for your house? they then borrow it from the prime dealers or a big bank and what happens there is that they get their money they call it the federal funds rate and they give loans between each other in the banking system so the federal funds rate is sent on to the local branch who then charges you the prime rate from these prime dealers and you get your five percent mortgage but what happens if our big banks run into trouble what happens if they need money? Well, they get it from the Federal Reserve, and it's called the discount rate. And they go to the discount window, as basically the Fed is always open, and say, hey, I need $10 billion, or whatever it is. And the Fed will say, yeah, it's going to cost you 3%. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Where does the Federal Reserve get the money 10 billion, 20 billion, whatever dollars to give to the big bank. It turns out that they just pull it out of thin air. The Federal Reserve just creates money out of thin air and says, you now have 20 billion dollars on deposit with us. They give that money to the big banks, who then loan it out to the local banks, who then loan it out to you. Why does the Fed charge 3% to the prime dealers? That's a very good question. Because if the Fed can create money out of thin air, why do they have to charge for it? Okay, so it turns out that this is simply a way of controlling the big banks. But also you need to understand that the Federal Reserve is not a public institution. It is not part of the federal government. It is a private institution, and there are actually people and entities that own the Federal Reserve, but that's a closely guarded secret. You can't find that anywhere on the web, okay? So the Federal Reserve is actually a private 
bank and they collect that money from the bankers. All right? Okay. So we'll get into that a little later. But what you need to understand here is that this is a mechanism for controlling interest rates throughout the entire system. Okay? So what would happen if the Federal Reserve adopted a tight money policy? Instead of 3%, what if they put this at 4%? Well, see, if they put it at 4%, then the big banks, they're going to have to charge 5% in order to make a profit. See, if they have to borrow at 4 remember they've loaned everything out, so they come to the Fed and borrow at 4 they have to charge 5 to make a profit. And so, on down the line... each group is going to charge a higher rate. So if the Federal Reserve simply says, you know what, for our free money, it's going to be 4%. Well, then the big banks have to charge 5 so then the local banks have to charge 6 So mortgage rates across the entire country go up 1%. And if that happens, all mortgages become more expensive. And so people that were like, ah, I was going to buy a house, but then I look at this bill that I'm gonna have to pay 6% interest I that makes my monthly payments too much and so I'm not gonna buy a house okay so you can see how this slows the economy down and if inflation was running too hot this would be a way to do that um, and that is a tight money policy you could conversely just go with a loose money policy what if the Fed instead of having three made this two percent now you might say to yourself, why can't the big banks just jack up the price and keep it at 20%? Well, it turns out that they're greedy. Okay, And what that means is that if they can steal customers from each other, they will. So market forces apply, they compete, and they bring that down. And so you end up with 3% just barely above what they need to be profitable because if they don't bring it down then some other bank will and they'll steal all their customers okay so same thing with the local branches and that's how you end up with a four percent interest rate on your mortgage home loans now if it was five and it drops to four people who are sitting on the sidelines will then say hey, it's come down in price, I, I can do this, they will go in. So those that are on the margin, that were between should I or should I not, if you lower it, those people then say, I will. Okay, And so houses start to turn over and things start to happen and people start to buy more. All right. So the Federal Reserve, by simply changing the discount rate up and down, can also change all the interest rates all the way along. What is going on currently? In order to combat the uh, great financial crisis in 2008 and 9, the Federal Reserve lowered this to 0.001%. This is one thousandth of a percent. It is essentially free money. Okay? And what happened at that time is they brought the 24 biggest banks into the White House and Obama sat them down and said, we're not leaving until we figure this out. Because we were on the edge of the entire system collapsing within 48 hours. And so the bankers sort of asked, like, are we free to go if we don't agree? And Obama said, no. So when things get desperate, the government uses its main tool, the threat of force. And the bankers were essentially told, you're all going to sign a deal, and you're all going to agree not to compete, and that's how we're going to recapitalize the banks so that you don't have a bankruptcy. So it, it was instead of handing the banks free money, which the American people would have you know, rebelled because the big banks or mostly, not all, but mostly responsible for the great financial crisis in 2008. And there was all these people in the street, Occupy Wall Street, and everyone was like ready to burn buildings and destroy stuff. 
So they didn't want to just hand them billions of dollars that they created out of thin air. So the way they did this is they lowered it to a ridiculous amount, and the big banks borrowed this essentially free money, but agreed not to compete. And left their interest rates at 3%. So over the last 10 years, what's been happening is that the big banks have been taking money from the Fed and they've been loaning it out at higher rates. And then that's passed along. And that's why for the last 10 years, mortgage rates have essentially stayed at 4%. Even though at this number right here, you would think that they would drop to much lower standards than that. So what happened in 2008 and 9 is that because of this system being employed, our bankers, the top, uh, you know, 2024, essentially became one big conglomerate bank. They became an oligopoly where they all work together at, in a collusion format to create, you know, money for themselves to make up for the losses to the banks that occurred in 2008 and 9. Okay, so now you know. Uh, currently, where does these uh, rates stand? They are very, very low. Um, what's been happening is that the Federal Reserve tried to raise these rates, and they raised them from ridiculously cheap, a thousandth of 1%, all the way up to a quarter of 1% back in 2018 they said well the economy is doing well so here we go we're gonna raise rates a little bit all right and then immediately in 2019 in September the whole system broke so in September of 2019 this number over here wasn't three percent this number went to ten percent and they were passing along 10% here. And what happened is the Federal Reserve panicked and said, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. Because if interest rates got out of their control and people started charging the real rate, which is more like 10%, then uh, that would be the biggest tight money policy we've had in 40 years. Okay, you'd have to go back to the, the 1970s depression before you'd find interest rates that high. So they basically hit the panic button and said they would supply unlimited, you know, liquidity for any type of situation. And JP Morgan, I think, was the bank that took advantage of this and said, okay, we'll borrow as much as we can. Okay. And then they immediately turned around and invested it to make money on it because this was essentially free money and they could put it out into the economy and charge more. So then the Fed was in... A real quandary they had painted themselves in the corner because they had said we're here for you banks and the bank said okay then we'll abuse you for every amount of dollar we can get and the Fed said but you can't do that and they said what do you want us to do go bankrupt what are you gonna do we're too big to fail okay so from September of 2019 until January of 2020 uh, the banks and the Fed were going back and forth and it was a real tussle like you know What's going to happen here? Are the, is the Fed actually going to, you know, let the spoiled children fail sometimes? But we'll never know because magically COVID came along and we had a real existential crisis and the Fed was able to keep the rates down to abysmally low levels. And so here we are. Now, the Fed can't control this going up, but what has been happening is that the banks, like as we learned in chapter si seven, as we learned in chapter seven, all cartels break down because they start to cheat on each other. So this is what's been happening recently. The banks have started to compete and they have brought down their rates to 1%. And so mortgages are down to like 2%. So the housing market is hot right now. People are buying anything and everything they can get their hands on because with mortgage rates like below, this is the lowest mortgage rate I think that's been calculated in like 5,000 years. I mean, this is crazy low. So 
people are buying houses hand over fist as fast as they can. Like, give me a house, give me a house, and lock in to that 30-year mortgage, like I talked about, lock into a 30-year mortgage, and then when inflation will surely go up higher than that in the future, they'll just be paying those mortgages back with worthless dollars, okay? So this is why the housing market is so hot right now, and the Fed doesn't know what to do because the bankers are taking them for everything they can, and they can, com they can create money uh, out of nothing, but now they're being forced to create money at ever increasing amounts to keep the system going. Okay? So we'll see how that all ends.